Hello Calculus Kids! Welcome back to another lesson in Calculus. This is Mr. Bean and in today's lesson we're going to talk about tangent lines and how a tangent line can give us an approximation of the function. Really simple topic, so it's going to be nice. We'll go through this kind of quickly and I think you'll nail this one when you get to the mastery check. So first off here I have a little statement that the tangent line of a function f of x at some x equals a, so at x equals i, whatever it is, we can make any number up we want, can give you an approximate value of f of x as long as you're looking at points that are close to a. So when we get done with the lesson, if you go back and reread this first line, I think it'll make a lot more sense. Here's what I'm talking about here. We've got a function that's concave up. So if you don't know what concavity is, it's, if you think about like a uh, the concavity of your contact lens that goes in your eye, it has a concavity. And sometimes you can tell if the concavity on the end of, end of it is uh, going the wrong way so that because that hurts your eyes when you put it in here. So this is concavity and the concavity is concave up. In other words, you have like a bowl that is opening up. That means concave up. When we get to unit five, in particular 5.6, I'm going to show you how you tell if a function is concave up or concave down. For now, in this lesson, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to give you these words that a function's concave up or that a function's concave down. So you don't have to worry about figuring that part out. It's part of the problem. What I want you to do is pick any point along here, probably down here somewhere on the curve. Just pick a point. I'm going to choose right there. And I'm going to put a dot. And then I want to draw a tangent line on that dot. So try and draw a straight line. Let's see. Okay, that was awful. Let's try again. Okay, that's better. So I have a tangent line that's going off here. And if I were to be able to take a point that's really close to this, this is kind of like my x equals a that I'm talking about up here. If I took a point that's really close, like let's say right there, that little dot would be an approximation of the function that's right above it at that same x value. See how they're close to each other? They're not the same, but they're close. So again, if I took a point right here, that would be an approximation of the function right there. And the further away I get from the function, the further off my approximation would be. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, the reason this concave up is important is because it tells you whether or not it is an overestimate or an underestimate. So if you look at this line, everywhere on this line, it's underneath the function. What that means is that if the function is concave up, the tangent line gives you an underestimate of the function. Okay, let's go to the next one. Concave down. Do exactly the same thing. Just want you to draw a point anywhere along there. Just pick a point, draw a line, and okay, there we go. That works. And then we're doing the same thing we did before, and that is if you just choose any point that's right around this x equals a dot, if we choose a point like right here, you can see that would be an approximation of that point right there. That's what we're doing. And in particular, is it an overestimate or an underestimate? It is an overestimate. Every single point on this line is going to be f above the function. Well, except for the tangent line, the tangent point, I should say. But all the rest of these that we were using for an approximation would be above the function. And the further away we get from that point, the worse of an approximation it would be. So you want to stay close to that little dot right there. Let's put it into practice. Here we go. Number one, f is concave up. See, you don't even have to figure out if it's concave up. I'm just going to tell you that. So it's concave up on its domain and f of four is equal to five, f prime of four equals three. So that just tells us we have our coordinate point four, five, and we have the derivative, or in other words, the slope of the tangent line at x equals four. So what is an estimate for 3.8 using this thing called local linear approximation? That's using the tangent line to give us an approximation. Local linear means that if, you know, if you think about you zoomed way in on a function, it looks like a line, right? That might be curved, but if you zoom way in, it's actually going to look like a line. Oop, your notes will be right. I'm going to got to fix that. Sorry. I should have said at x equals four. I'll fix that. And your notes will be correct. Okay. So, uh, what is the estimate for 3.8? Well, first we have to come up with a tangent line. So let's do that first. Y minus what's my, uh, my Y value five equals, and then my slope is three, because that's the derivative, three times x minus four. Okay, we've been doing that for a while now. There's our tangent line. You could solve for y if you want. It's not necessary to. You could use either this or, you know, or we could, uh, y equals three x, distribute that, negative 12, add the five, negative 12 plus five is negative seven. So you could use either one of these. It's actually probably easier to use this first one, and I'll show you why, because now we're going to use 3.8, and plug that in to the line and see where is this line at x equals 3.8. So I'm gonna go 3.8 minus four, and then I have y minus five equals 
three times, and this is just negative 0.2. So see, this is a little easier to do without the need of a calculator. You can use a calculator on this, uh, and then that's just gonna be y equals 4.4, and I'm cheating because in the background I'm using a calculator. Okay, so 4.4, this is an estimate of the actual function. We don't even know what the function is, we just had some information about it. So now let's go to, is it an underestimate or over, overestimate and explain. Concave up, it's concave up. So what do we have going on here? We have something like this. We have some tangent line taken off like that. And we are using, oh, that was awful. And then we have, we checked, this is at x equals four. We checked at 3.8. We got an answer of a y value of 4.4, but this whole line is underneath it. So this is an underestimate. So this is what you say, underestimate, if I can write here, because f of x is concave up. That's why. It's an underestimate because f of x is concave up. And that's all you have to say. That's how we know that that value is an underestimate. Next problem, number two. So we've got now the actual function and we know that it's concave down at x equals one. So let's find the tangent line. So remember we need, uh, we need x1, we need y1, and we need slope, which the slope is the derivative. So we already have the x1, we know that's a one. We need the y value. So let's figure that out first. F of the number one is going to equal five times one minus two times one minus two, five minus four. Hey, it's also a one. Okay, so the y value is a one as well. Now let's do the derivative. The derivative with a one plugged in. I think we can do this all in one step. The derivative of five x is just five minus two x cubed is six x squared and I'm plugging in a one, and then the derivative of minus two is nothing, that's zero. So now I have five minus six, it equals negative one. All right, so my slope is a negative one, and so now I can do the line. Y minus one equals negative one, and then times X minus one. Okay, there's my line. Again, I still think it's easier to use this form when you have to plug in a number uh, like a 1.1, you'll see here on this next one. So what's the estimate? We plug in a 1.1, y minus one equals negative one times 1.1 minus one. So then let's go over here, what's this become? y minus one equals 1.1 minus one is 0 0.1 times negative one, so negative 0 0.1. Add one to both sides and we get y equals 0 0.9. That is my estimate that the tangent line gives me for what the actual function is. Now we could plug in a 1.1 and see exactly what it was if we wanted, but that's not the point of this. We're trying to see how the tangent line can help us get an approximation. And then I know it's concave down. So now again, if it's concave down and I have any tangent line I want on this thing, if it's a tangent line, then we know that this is an overestimate. The line is above the function. So overestimate because f of x is concave down. And that's your justification. You're explaining why this is an overestimate because you know the concavity, so the tangent line had to be above. That's what that means. Last problem, here we go, this is the last one here. Now I'm giving you a differential equation. A differential equation is just like the derivative of when you do implicit differentiation. Remember when you, we back to when we did implicit differentiation and you solve for dy dx? Okay, that's a differential equation. Now, what's this weird stuff here? Let y equals f of x be the particular solution to the differential equation. With the initial condition, f of two equals zero. Okay, that looks really confusing. This is all this means. If you have, the, y equals f of x is the particular solution of what this used to be before we took the derivative. So if we like did the antiderivative, which is actually a real thing, we'll do that later this year. If you went backwards, you'd end up with this. Okay, we don't care what it is. It doesn't matter. All we're telling you is that it exists and you know that, it, that this point happens. So if you were to take the antiderivative and figure out what the actual real function used to be and you plug in two into the X, then these Y is a zero. X is two, Y is zero. That's all this is, okay? So let's do this. Write an equation for the line tangent of the graph at the point two, zero. So we have our X one and our Y one, but we need slope. Slope is just the derivative, right? So if I say that slope equals this thing, the derivative at that point, so I plug in e to the zero for the y value, two times, and then it's two squared minus five times two. 
and let's simplify this a bit. What do we get? This is 1. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 minus 10. So that whole thing is equal to negative 2. So the slope is negative 2. All right, what's my tangent line? y minus 0 equals the slope is negative 2 times x minus 2. Oh, hey, there it is. I mean, yes, I could clean this up if I wanted. y equals, that's gone, negative 2x plus 4. Either one of these works. It's fine. Uh, they'd both be correct. And now we're just going to plug in the 2.2 to get an approximation. So we say y is going to equal negative 2 times 2.2 plus 4. Simplify this up, and it is negative 0 0.4. And again, this is an estimate of the actual function. That's all this is. It's close to what the actual function would be at 2.2. Now, in this case, we can't do any type of underestimate or overestimate because we don't know anything about the concavity of the original function. All right, now we've covered everything. So again, you're just using a tangent line. You use that straight tangent line to help you get an approximation of the function itself. All right, rock that master check, and I'll see you back in our next lesson.